All right. Well. <laughs> So it looks like the stream is live now. Sorry, I had a little bit of a trouble getting that going. Uh, hi, welcome. I'm Jim Hodgson, and uh, this is the hi. Joke Writing Grand Prix. Uh, I am joined by my co-host this time, uh, Jamie Curley. Right. Say hello, hey Jamie. Guys. Well, hello. So it looks like uh, some jokes today. <laughs> I've asked Jamie to uh, help host the show, um, not only because she's a friend of mine and she's got a giant brain, uh, but because every time she's been a contestant, she has smashed everyone. So <laughs> uh, you uh, you Which are is thanking me. Saying that the sandbox is now closed to me because I do not play well with others. So she's just too good. Just <laughs> simply too good. So I've already uh, I got some players on the uh, scoreboard here. As you can see, uh, you should be able to see the chat there in the top left, those of you who are watching on YouTube. Now, um, hold on one second. I'll take a sip of my tea. Jamie, I think you have a cup of tea, too. I did. I got a beautiful cup of chai, which is perfect for this weather because Mother Nature is kicking our ass today. It is. Yeah. It has been... A nightmare today. <laughs> it did just pour here where we are. So this is the Joke Riding Grand Prix. Uh, what we're going to do is in a moment, I'm going to throw up a timer and a one-word prompt. And our joke writers uh, in the Comedy Writing Discord are going to do their best to write a joke uh, in that five minutes. Now, we used to just let people throw out jokes as many as they wanted to, in, uh, as many as they could think of uh, from that prompt. Uh, which is one of the ways that, that Jamie racked up so many points when she played because she was able to just <laughs> write jokes. Just She can just churn them out. Um, but uh, And then Jamie and I together will award you between zero and ten points uh, for your joke at the end of that five minutes. person with the most points at the end will win. Hold on one second. Uh, there was another player who wanted to join. Uh, somebody tell Sauce that I just gave him the role, so he should be able to join. Uh, all right, so what else do we need to know? I'm not sure. Look, I'm just happy that the stream seems to be working. There's like, <laughs> in order to get this thing going, there's like all these million pieces that are that they all have to work. So uh, just the fact that you can see me and like, I think you maybe even can hear me and Jamie. Uh, it's, a, uh, it's a feat of engineering. <laughs> so let's get going um let's have our first prompt now i should say um this is a this is a joke writing uh contest it's it's sort of in the format of a game show as you can see but it is not a saying th mean things contest uh if you're one of those people who is a comedian but all you really do is just say mean things about people that's not going to really garner you any points um, it's meant, it's like, you'll see, you'll see as we go, you'll, you'll get an idea. Um, what else do you need to know? Oh, um, you're going to get a one word prompt, but your joke doesn't have to like, it doesn't have to contain that word. So it's not like a, um, it's not a magic thing where you have to, your, your joke has to contain that particular word. Uh, oh, it looks like we got another player there. Hold one second, please. And just remember, guys, your joke, you're going for your best joke. So a lot of some of the things you can do, um, think about joke structures that you're familiar with. Just because it contains the word, think about what else that word makes you think of. Um, improvers, improvisers, sorry, we'll call it the A to C method where you start with that one. What's the connecting thing, and what point do you get to after that? There's a lot of different ways to approach it, but remember, just going for your best joke. Although sometimes the funniest joke is the low-hanging fruit. I will admit I am a terribly easy laugh. <laughs> I will crack up over puns, which <laughs> Jim will not, is not having it. So. Yeah, that's that's true. I'm not I'm not the biggest fan of puns. That's another great reason to have uh, uh, Jimmy with us tonight. All right, so let's get started. We are going to have our first prompt, and you will see a timer on screen. And uh, then you'll just think of uh, you'll think <laughs> of your best joke. And uh, when the timer completes, you'll hear a noise, and I'll turn it off. 
and then you can type in your joke. You can type it in between now and the end of five minutes if you like. That's fine, too. Uh, guys who are in the chat are players. Um, you uh, you can chat in the chat if you like, uh, but uh, just make sure that I, I – help me make sure that I see everybody's jokes. All right, so it looks like we got ourselves five players here or so. We've got Craig, Pastor Fussy Cat, Aaron, 1971, Koi, and Admiral. Yeah, great job, guys. Uh, if I missed anybody, I can add people anytime. But uh, let's get started. Let's have our first prompt. Jamie, you ready? Yes. All right, here we go. Man spreading. That Man sucks. Man spreading. <laughs> I don't like it. Let's come oh, up with come another on. one. Oh, uh, you liked man spreading? Too late. At least, at least see where they're gonna go. At least, like I said, if that. See, basically, that's. I think a, a word like that is like level sets. You you test where the crowd is at. <laughs> at least, at just, least let them see what they're gonna do with it. Come on. Uh, chance. Yeah, I don't know about man spreading. I I just feel like it's gonna go uh, um. Animatronic. That seems too esoteric. Innocence. There we go. You guys will be able to make something out of innocence. Oh, we got a Basement Tribune has joined us. We need another player here. Basement Tribune. Tribune or Tribune? Up to six players. Oh, yeah. Sorry, Sauce. Sauce is annoyed because we... Uh, I apologize for the naming thing on the screen where it says object, object. Uh, I don't know what that is. That's some kind of Discord bug. Uh, please accept my apology for this thing, which I cannot control. I keep double-clicking on it and telling it to refresh the cache. So there you can see his name. But it seems to forget about people's names. So whatever. We'll deal with it. So that is uh, that's already a minute gone on Innocence. So, Jamie, when you... Uh, we're winning this game every time you played. What what was going through your mind at this point? Are you, are you like, is it like a mental combination lock or 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 what's happening? And it, it varies. Sometimes a lot of times I will. So I like to write. If I'm some some of the jokes I write. In fact, a lot of the jokes I write, I do it as um, either about a character or in character. And so if I wanted to write a joke, say about innocence, you know, that's something. I might turn on myself, so I might be, you know, try to make a joke in which we talk about my own innocence, or I might pick a character, like say from life, you know, I do a lot of my boyfriend, my stepmother jokes, my mm -hmm. father jokes, um, so I might work it, work it from that angle, um, but something like that, I'm probably more likely going to talk about, like, my own innocence, and then also what words go along with it, naivete, Maybe try to, you know, work a joke in like that or um, get more basic with it. You know, it's make it perfect. If you're being mean, you could probably do like, uh, you know, I said, in my innocence, I blank and then run with a punchline from there. I'm trying to think of what would be a good one for innocence. I'm just like, hmm. Yeah. I feel like naivete is a good is a good entry point in that, you know, you're so naive, what was the result of that? So I tend to make a lot of jokes like that, but right. I don't know, for, you need, for innocence, let's see. Or, I'm talking about my stepmother, I could talk about a lack of innocence. <laughs> hey. <laughs> or, <laughs> um, let's see. Like, uh, you know, naive um you could do a lot of like dumb blonde jokes those are those are always popular i think dumb blonde jokes continue to be popular even to this day even though we know better it's just like and i think that's part of it you know we know that joke writing is you know you can punch down or rather you punch up but not down and i think people still feel like certain people have an advantage in life and so it's okay to still poke fun yeah I mean, I, I, I'm i very careful about that because I'm a an overweight, scruffy, middle-aged white guy. So it's like <laughs> there's 
I mean, I, I'm like, you know, if if you imagine somebody who uh, overstepped their bounds, it's there's I'm who you imagine, you know. Which is unfortunately makes you the target, Jim. I'm very sorry. That's okay. Go and get your, go and get your bullseye T-shirt out of your Robin Williams closet. We're we're taking you down. Um, oh, Essie has a question in the chat. Uh, is using Google for inspiration cheating? Not Googling jokes, just looking at images and stuff. No, you can't cheat. Um, yeah, I, I don't think, know. I, think. I mean, yeah, you because this is still something you're going to make up out of your head. If you're, you can't steal someone else's joke, that's just, I mean, we won't know it, but you'll know it. And, you know, you're robbing yourself of an opportunity. But, yeah, I don't think it's, I don't think it's cheating at all. If you can, within five minutes, um, make that work, then, yeah, why wouldn't you? It wouldn't surprise me with uh, the folks that we have on hand if if you stole any comedian's joke. Uh, it wouldn't surprise me if somebody out of this group was like, hey, isn't that blah, blah, blah's joke? I mean, you know. Well, that is true. We do have a wealth of talent and comedy knowledge, yeah. you know, front to back here. And not an international comedy knowledge. You've got some people from, you know, not just in the United States. So, yeah, I think it would be pretty difficult to steal a joke. But, yeah, if within five minutes you can – you know, plug it into Google and find something funny, then I say, yeah, go for it. I mean, I don't think it's cheating at all. All right, gang, there is the timer. So your five minutes is up. Uh, so let's start seeing those jokes. Okay, here comes our first joke from Admiral. Uh, Jamie, okay. I'll read it, and then we'll uh, we'll talk about what we think. Okay. So I had a good relationship with the church growing up, the priest treated me like his own girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's terrible. But it's funny. <laughs> I think that's I think that's ten points. What do you think? I would I concur. That's that's a tenor. That's a yeah. tenor. And this this is this is twelve years of Catholic education talking. That's primo. <laughs> uh you know what I love about that is um it had a great shape. Um yeah. It uh, the funny the funny is all the punch is one word, treating me like his own girlfriend. The one word is all the way at the end. You know, uh, technically that's that's a pretty great joke. It it is a classic shape, and like I said, that little hint of truth. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So <laughs> great work, Admiral. Uh, okay, guys, while we score these jokes, I'm going to go ahead and put the I'm going to try to go ahead and put the timer up for the next batch while we score these, so you guys can be thinking about the next joke. I just thought of doing that, so uh, hold with me. Let's get our next prompt. It's going to be winter, so you guys work on winter uh, while we score the rest of these jokes. Okay. Joke two, Jamie. Uh, this is from A.A. Run. I lost my innocence as a teen. My dad felt me guilty crashing his car. I think the, I think all the parts are there. But I think it's clever. I I mean it's a it's a real it's a it's a really clever joke. It's a really good play on both the word innocence, innocence versus guilty, and then also the expectation of where you thought it was going. I lost my innocence at a teen. As a teen, you usually yeah. figure I mean you know their their virginity. But yeah, I think it's I think it's clever. Yeah, I'm gonna go five points. What do you think? More or less. Uh, yeah. Six, come on. Six, okay. He's a friend. Give him six. <laughs> <laughs> These people are all friends. <laughs> uh, okay, four minutes left on winter, guys. So uh, keep your brains going. All right. Okay. Y'all can tell I'm the Paula. I'm, I'm the Paula in this. I'm just not drunk. So yeah, you're always going to get like a little extra. You're going to get a little extra love from me. But yeah. <laughs> uh, speaking of extra love, thank you so much to our patrons. That's that's uh, this whole scene shop thing is supported by our uh, patreons. And you can find out about that at sceneshop.us, as well as our the show that we made together. Jamie was on that. Uh, she voiced one of the characters on the show with us, uh, Grievance Gulch, name of the show. Uh, find out about all that, sceneshop.us. Uh, and uh, if you're enjoying this, hey, subscribe on the YouTube. Maybe jump on the Patreon and throw us a couple bucks. <laughs> okay, so uh, next joke from Basement Tribune. I don't like how people refer to virginity as innocence. I was doing way worse things in my life life before I lost it at 32. That's a pretty good one. I I I have to I have to apologize to Basement Tribune 
because that's a pretty decent joke and I fumbled the delivery and that's not that <laughs> that's not basement I, tribune's fault. That is like so I that is one of those that's like a stand up joke. I think it needs you it's you're right it is delivery but it's it it's a personality joke. I think that like the person like I said you person delivering it will give it the right yeah. intonation, the right pauses in the right place. Yeah, I think a pause is going to be key there because yeah. I was doing way worse things in my life before I lost it at 32. At 32, right? Exactly. Yeah. So yeah. I think that's I think that's an awesome stand-up joke. All right, what are you thinking points wise? We give him five. Oh, I think it's north of five. How about seven? I'll go seven. All right, consensus seven, yeah. reached. There we go. <laughs> so, uh, Craig was blank on that one, which I find hard to believe. Big brain on Craig. Now we'll move on to Coy. He says, people think I'm more innocent than I am. Someone told me, oh, you wouldn't even hurt a fly. And I felt so guilty because one time I literally killed a fly. <laughs> I'm on board. Wait, can you read it again? People think I'm more innocent than I am. Someone told me, oh, you wouldn't even hurt a fly. And I felt so guilty because one time I literally killed a fly. I feel like I, I like it. I, I, I feel like it's kind of like it's like a change up pitch. It's like it goes left. It goes right. It goes left again. I'm on board. I, mm, it feels more like, I mean... I see the comedy in it, but it doesn't feel like, no, no. I mean, like it's, it, I, like I said, I see the comedy in it, but it doesn't feel like a joke. It feels more like a line spoken by a character, if that makes sense. Mm, I think you're describing a joke. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, that's not the same thing. Uh, okay. Well, what are you thinking? Uh, where are you? Where are you landing points wise? I feel like it's a five, but you're the boss, so. Well, we're a uh, a biumvirate. Is that a thing? <laughs> well, how about okay? So, what would you give it? What 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 are you thinking? I'm thinking seven, getting on for eight, maybe. Should we split the difference? Let's, yeah, so let's split the difference. Let's uh, let's let's say six. Okay. Six it is. Between five and seven is six. Okay, and. Uh, Finally, we got sauce. So oh, I got to put sauce on me. Okay, there is your timer, guys, for the... Um, that is your timer for winter. So let me get sauce on the board here, and we'll score him. Okay. Now, here's sauce's joke. Slept on the couch a few times for crimes that I did not commit. I maintain, I maintain my position on that couch, in a sense. Let me try again. Slept on the couch a few times for crimes that I did not commit. I maintain my position on that couch in a sense. In a sense. So I think it's like... I think this is a, a, a wordplay. I maintain my position because he's he's sort of... He's comparing the... Uh, he doesn't think that his position in the argument was wrong. And he's also maintaining his physical position on the couch. I think that's where the... I think that's where the comedy is meant to be. Okay. Uh, Sauce, you're at a bit of a disadvantage here, uh, at least where I'm concerned, uh, because I'm not a big wordplay fan. I mean, I, I, I enjoy it and everything, but my problem with wordplay is so many people, you know, who are like internet-y comedy writers, which is all of us, mind you. I'm, I'm speaking about the whole tribe. Um, you, it, it plays well on Reddit, and and places like that. But if you go if you go to an open mic night and say these wordplay jokes, the most the very most that you can expect is an applause break. Um or a groan even. And we're in the business of laughs, guys, not applause breaks. That's that's yeah. that's my thinking. Now, Jamie, you be the good cop. <laughs> I can be the good cop. I can see here's the thing though, when you're starting out Sometimes you just need the noise. 
I we, we we went a few weeks back to an open mic night and the the, the death by secondhand embarrassment when the poor guy is like just can't even he I mean, you can't even like i said it was so bad you couldn't even like it was just silence like that that thud of silence so even mm -hmm. if you're just if you're just starting out yeah the the more advanced you get definitely you want actual laughs but when you're just starting out sometimes just that a giggle a moan an acknowledgement that you were heard <laughs> might be enough yeah to keep you coming back the next time <laughs> well here's what i do like about it i do like that it's um I have never heard it before. I've never heard that comparison before. So okay. uh, I like that a lot. And I also like that it's like, um, it's autobiographical. It's not, uh, you know, it's not one of those jokes that starts like, have you ever been sleeping with this chick? You know, it's like, okay. it's it's got a, it's got its own, uh, it lives in its own it. universe. Yeah. Okay. I'll, yeah, I'll, you know what? I'll give points for elevated. You're right. It's yeah. Realize and sauce is new as well, so we should we should give him a uh, let's give him a little bit of a benefit of the doubt, give him okay. a little bit of a boost. I'm thinking five. I'll go five. I'm, I'm I concur solidly on five. Sauce, this is not easy. Uh, we appreciate you being here. Uh, in fact, we appreciate all of you being here. We just appreciate sauce a little bit more because we've only we only met sauce uh, because they wanted to play in this game. Uh, thanks for being here. All right, so I believe we've got some other jokes to read here. And uh, it was a little bit much for my brain, guys, to be honest with you, to try to, like, run the timer and score the joke. So let's let's uh, let's try to get through these winter jokes, Jamie, and then we'll uh, start the next timer. What do you say? Yes, I like that. It was too much for my brain. It was just too much for the senses. Okay, so uh, our first joke, once again, from Admiral on winter. He says, it's the fall. Time for big corporations to close their heavy eyelids and wake up in the spring, a colorful woke butterfly. I mean, pretty accurate. That's a that's a late capitalism uh, greenwashing pretend wokeness joke. I'm on board. Jamie, did I lose you? No, no, I'm thinking. I'm think. I'm. Oh, that was the sound of you thinking. I apologize. That was the sound. That was the sound of thinking, and. The thing is, if I'm thinking, I feel like I'm not laughing. So, yeah, <laughs> more of a it's more of a late capitalist haiku to me. But again, it's beautiful. Like I said, the it it's beautiful. I just don't feel like it's and it's a truth. So I feel like it's more of a chuckle and a laugh, just for me. Okay. Uh. Well, can you can you put a number on that thought? I would put a five on that. A five. All right. Another five I like for Admiral. Half, I feel like it's halfway to a laugh. Okay. Uh, another five for Admiral. We'll put Admiral in the lead, at least for now. So let's get on to our next joke, which is from Basement Tribune. You know winter is the worst season when the fictional series is terrified of it coming. <laughs> that's a pretty good joke. Now, that's a uh, that's a Game of Thrones joke. Um and uh, it might be a little bit uh, dusty, but what? Uh, what do you think, Jamie? Oh, okay. Yes, Game of Thrones is over, but it was such a cultural juggernaut. I don't know that anyone would not. It's not something. It's not a joke that's going to leave anybody out. I said. This is, I said I giggled. I, said, okay, I, cool. I wasn't even a fan of Game of Thrones, and I giggled because, like I said, it's not a joke that's going to leave anybody behind because it was such a cultural juggernaut. Even if you're not hadn't watched it. People were talking about it, and all the articles were about it. So you kind of know, you you know, like I said, there's there's a there's a point there's a, there's a touchstone there. I I think, like I said, I thought it was cute. All right, uh, where are you I'm willing, numerically? I'm willing to I'm willing to go six or seven on that one. Well, let's go seven. All right. So that would put Basement Tribune at fourteen. And uh, now we'll go to Aaron nineteen seventy one. Here it is. I hate winter, which is ironic. I'm cold blooded. Uh. Well. Uh, now A. A. Ron has known me for a while, and he knows about my uh, he knows about my thoughts on wordplay. So if he's gonna if he's gonna post a joke like that, it's because he he, he well knows that the, he's in shark infested water. 
Okay. Uh, what do you think, number wise? I give it a six. Five points for the joke and one point just for Aaron, because I know Aaron's like a champ. Yeah, good dude. Okay. <laughs> so Craig has posted a joke. Now, you may recall, Jamie, that he blanked uh, previously. So this is his first game so far, his first joke so far in the game. He says, All right. Come on, Craig. Winter is coming. Winter's coming. Winter must have been very excited. Hey. <laughs> Yep. Uh, normally, Greg, I would be all over you for the wordplay thing, but uh, that is your first. That's your first joke in the game. It's your first time playing the game, and your first joke in the game. So I think. Uh, and it's some... a taste, and it's a fairly tastefully written sex joke. Yeah. I will, I, like I said, I will. I will always go. I will always give a little grace to a fairly tastefully written sex joke. Like I said, you would have hated the one I came up with. So. <laughs> Okay, uh, let's let's talk about how numerically happy you are with it. First joke of the game, I'll give him an eight. Okay. Jamie says eight. You get an eight. All right, gang, there is where we stand so far. Uh, and it sounds like I might have missed... Oh, I did miss uh, Pastor Pussycat's joke. So here it is. Innocence is thinking that manspreading is putting extra mayo on your sandwich. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, I'm sorry, I missed that, Pastor Pussycat. Uh, Wait, uh, where where are you number wise on that one, Jamie? I mean, that was that that sounded like a good laugh from you. That was a so that was a solid nine. Nine. That was a solid nine. Love it. Guys, uh, I do apologize. I will occasionally look over jokes. There's just something wrong with my brain. Um, I apologize, but thank you so much for um, thank you so much for keeping me on track. Yeah. Please don't let me forget anybody. I'm trying to track it myself, but unfortunately, I think my phone has a little bit of lag too. So. Gotcha. Okay, so we got a joke from Koi here, and he's got the the chat have added reactions. So that that I, I mean. I think that's kind of you guys to do that. But if you're adding reactions to other people's jokes, it's just going to make me think before I even read it that you guys all like it. So, I mean, you're kind of, <laughs> you're kind of screwing me. You're, you're, you're screwing yourself, I think. So here's the joke. I haven't read it yet with my eyeballs, but here it is. Winter must have been terrifying for early humans. Like, why is it so cold? What's this white stuff falling from the sky? Why are all these Bing Crosby songs on the radio? <laughs> I mean that's a great joke. That, that uh that was a very cute joke. That's a great joke. That is a joke that you could tell um anywhere. You could anywhere, say that in front yeah. of anybody, corporate, uh kids. That's a great joke. You could it, you can well, build okay. a you could build a stand-up comedy career on a joke like that. Maybe not kids cuz they'd all go Bing Crosby who? But yes, that joke would kill at the senior center. Yeah. <laughs> but I think that's a second laugh with the, I think that's a second laugh when the kids are all like who and their parents are, you know, then the parents get to laugh again. Cause it's like, you don't know who being, I, I don't know, Jamie, what do you think? When number wise, what are you thinking? I I want to give it a 10. All right. It's like a really, the, the, like I said, the shape of it was great. The content was great. And like you said, it's one of those universal jokes. Okay. So now we're getting to uh, Pastor Fussy Cat's um, joke from winter, uh, which we didn't get to just yet. So here it is. Joke. <laughs> you can't be a mustached adult on the sledding hill without children. It's creepy, and kids are not that expensive nowadays. <laughs> uh, well, we both kind of laughed, so... There's definitely something there, but I feel like I'm not sure it that needs, all the puzzle pieces yeah, plug into one another. It what needs, do you think? It, it needs it needs shaping, but the general like the general mental picture that you get is very good. And I know it's hard because you're doing these things on the fly, and yeah, it's like I said, the first instinct you can come up with something that's good, but then you have to go back and kind of 
honed it a little bit and it's hard to do in five minutes i said i got like i said i wrote a winter joke while we were talking but it's one of those like I said even i know that's not my best work and i'm gonna have to go back and refine it a little bit so if you want to hear it it's like uh, my boyfriend said it was colder than a witch's tit so i broke up with him because i don't know what witch he's been fondling <laughs> i mean i'm on board i'm on board with that joke but again, like I said, it's got it's it's joke shaped. It's yeah. initially got ment like I said, the mental part of it's good, but it needs it needs honing. And like I said, it's really hard to do that in a few minutes. So I've got mad respect for all of these jokes that are that are coming through. Absolutely. Mad Not respect all around. I'm just picturing the douchebag on the sledding. I'm just picturing like the creep on the sledding hill, which is a chuckle in and of itself. <laughs> all right. All right, hang on. So our next prompt will now be coming up, guys. You're doing great. Hope you're having fun, joke writers. Yes. I really appreciate you guys being here. You're knocking it right out of the park. So let's go with another prompt. Warmth. I think that's too close to winter. Yeah. Impress. So five minutes on impress. Now this time, uh, I haven't really been asking you guys to do that, but do this. But this time, let's try to get those jokes in before the end of the five minutes. So that way... Because I feel like, I mean, this is a loose thing, and this is all for fun, so it doesn't really matter. But let's try to get those jokes in before the end of the five minutes, and that way that way, people aren't still thinking about their jokes while I'm reading the first two or three. Groovy. Now, Jamie, let me, uh, let me ask you a question. Mm -hmm. What do you think about the word douchebag? Do you think that should be, should that be something that we stop saying, douchebag and douche? Two minds about it. Two minds. So, well, three minds, actually. All right, so <laughs> there's, there's there's three minds about it. I know, why not four? Um, being a woman, yes, probably. Because it's something that is, like I said, I'll, I'll spare you guys the whole feminist rant, but yeah, because all things feminine or most things feminine have been associated with terrible things, then yeah, there's an argument to be made about cutting that out of the language. However, from a comedian standpoint, no, because it's an easy way to insult somebody <laughs> and it usually always gets somebody to laugh. It's also a very easy word to jump to like it's already so ingrained in our brains like the first thing you do is like when somebody's a jerk you can call him just a, well, guess this guy's just a douche but the other thing is it's also just fun to say like from a linguistic yeah. standpoint there's something very like it tickles all the right synapses in the brain douchebag you know and there's something there's something even elegant or french about it douchebag <laughs> douchebag <-y. laughs> it's got that so sort of uh it's got that sort of one two punch uh, feeling about it, you know, but, but, um, I, I was saying it when my wife and I used to do a podcast together and she, she decided that she didn't want to hear it anymore. And she has very good reasons for saying that. So I think yeah. I've tried to kind of like, like watch myself, uh, on saying it, but, um, I don't know. I feel like, uh, there's just too many sort of too many things that are are just sort of baked into uh, like American vernacular that, right. you know, we have to keep thinking like, wait a minute, should we be saying that? <laughs> there are so many things now that you're like, well, maybe we shouldn't say that. But as a, again, there are some things that I don't think you're ever really going to get complete, completely rid of. And the problem is this, if, if there weren't that association of femininity being negative, like if we could stamp that out, that being the problem, then a lot of these problematic words wouldn't be a problem anymore. But then, like I said, we'd have to stamp out a whole lot of things in the American, <laughs> in the, not just American, the worldwide, like social consciousness in order to make that a thing. Cause like I said, it's one thing, you know, although, I don't know. If we're talking about the evolution of man, they never said douchebag on Star Trek, the next generation. So I don't know. That's true. Good point. Uh, 
so our pal Remington has just joined us. Uh, Remington Steele, uh, one of the writers from Grievance Gulch. Um, Remington! Great to have you. Nice to see you. Hey, uh, So a minute to go on Impress, uh, guys. Remington, if you can write a joke uh, on Impress within a minute, slam it on in here. Uh, Jamie, I forgot to give uh, Pastor Fussycat his uh, ranking for his his number for his joke. So I just gave it a seven. Okay. As long as you're okay with that. That's fine. He'll catch up. I have faith. Pastor's going to catch up. And guys, this is, like I said, it's loosey-goosey, but you never know. A come from behind is entirely possible. So... Just keep yeah. writing good ones. Don't give up. Don't give up. No. I don't know the rest of the words, and I don't do a very good Paula Cole impersonation. So <laughs> we are down to nine seconds to go on impress. Four, three, two. Get those jokes in, fools. One. There is the timer. Everybody should be posting their jokes now. All right, Jamie, let's go. First one comes in from A. Aaron, 1971. He says, I failed to impress my wife with my lovemaking skills. Apparently, kissing my manager's ass doesn't count. I mean, <laughs> solid joke. That's very much a, a, I mean, what do you think, Jamie? That's that's a 10. All right. 10 it is. That is a, that is a solid in right there. Leaping to the top of the leaderboard with that one. Hey, hey, Ron, well done. Okay, so Craig says he's done another wordplay. He says, the other jokes here are so impressive, my ego is now permanently indented. <laughs> All right, Craig, based, based only on goodwill and the fact that we learned some Tasmanian slang from you earlier, I'm going to go, how do you feel about two, Jamie? Or should we go higher? Uh, I mean, let's, let's give him a three because he was also sucking up to everybody, all the other joke writers. So, <laughs> Yeah, yeah. A little bit of uh, a general flattery. Not just a for us, but. That will, that will keep you in a writer's room That's true. even longer than your talent. That's true. So. All right, so here we go. Basement Tribune says, I don't try to impress my wife with nice clothes or jewelry. I do it by remembering to keep my clothes off the bathroom floor. That's true. What do you think? Uh, you know, that, I, can, I can see that. That's a good one. Um, I'd, go, I'd go five, five or six. I have a similar joke where I, I'd say, like, um, uh, I do a lot of things in the bedroom that other men won't do, like folding fitted sheets. Like folding clothes. <laughs> folding fitted sheets. Okay, yeah. That's a good one. Uh, so you said five or six for a BT? I'd say five or six, I'd say five or six just because it's it, – you're right. It's got the same – it's got a similar shape to the one you wrote. It's just just a little tweak of the lead up. I think like that it's just the yeah it just needs a little a little shaving a little shaping yeah i like the um it's a great joke and if like i may truth. yeah if i may toot my own horn and i may uh <laughs> <laughs> i think adding a little bit like letting people think that it's going to go in a sexual direction and then not so in this case basement tribunes like it starts in a sort of a domestic direction and stays there. I think if, if the setup was like hinted at, at sexuality and then there was no sexuality, I think it could maybe work a little better, but you know, that's, that's how I did it and I'm not you. So you have to write your own jokes. Right. Uh, but, uh, so that was a six for Basin Tribune went to 20. So second on the leaderboard now. So let's go to Admiral who says, I never exaggerate on my resume. That's why I'm such a good lion juggler. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it made us both laugh. 
I like it. I like it. Jamie, I'm starting to think that we might have to uh, we, we might have to bring you out of retirement. Uh, uh, not that you're retired, but I, I forced retired you by asking you to be the the, uh, the co-host. Uh, we might have to throw you back in the mix. These guys are doing a pretty strong job. I like it. So, uh, Coy says, if you want to impress people, you just have to be yourself. I promise it will work, unless you're stupid and ugly. Uh, I think that's a straight 10. What do you think? I would say, yes, straight 10. Hard, hard 10. <laughs> uh, he says, I hope this doesn't count as mean and unfunny. Uh, no, it's not. It's not mean because you're not directing it toward one, one person and it, and it mimics all of that sort of those like, uh, platitudes that you get in life. Uh, yeah, I liked it a lot. Pastor Pussycat. Have you ever been sleeping with this chick and then she tries to impress you by tying a cherry stem in her mouth? I have, and now I have ants in my bed. He's, uh, this is a meta joke, uh, gang, because I was complaining earlier about jokes that start with uh, words like, have you ever been sleeping with this chick? <laughs> uh, and now Pastor Pussycat is, uh, uh, I guess, trying to rile me up, and it's worked. I'm filled with rage jb i'm gonna have to have you you're gonna have to take over because i'm well okay angry it's okay it's okay like i said the, there is a crowd that would definitely go mad for that joke so and True. it's and it's fun so i'm gonna i'm gonna go solid five five it is i'm gonna go five i'm gonna go solid five I hope it was worth it, Pastor, for your protest vote. This is what that was. <laughs> okay. All right. Sauce. Back at it. What do we got, Sauce? Crushing on someone in high school is stressful. You think of trying ways to impress them, and by the time you get to impressing them, you graduated. <laughs> I like it. That's a sweet joke. Yeah. I like it, too. Okay, that's... I'm going to go seven or eight. Let's go, let's go eight. Anyway, okay. All right. Koi at the top of the leaderboard. I think I saw Koi say that he is sitting outside his work, not going inside, playing on his phone. So we might lose him here in a minute because he might have to go do his job. Don't do it, dude. He says, I'm going into work where I can't watch the stream. Can anyone do me a favor of putting the prompts into this chat or general? Thank you so much. He wants to play. and I, Look, I support this. I support this. I'm anti-capitalist all the way. Okay. Uh, final joke. My... Sorry. Oh, go ahead. I was going to say, if you, I'll, I'll wait for the final joke, and then I'll give you what I came up with. Oh, good. Okay. So final joke of the round, uh, Remington, late joiner. Now, Remington only had a minute to think of this, if I recall correctly. He says, yes. I like to impress people. I do it by juggling onions while cutting knives. <laughs> um, Impressive. Yeah, it is well, impressive. Not okay for a one minute joke for only having one minute to think. And 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 coming in late. So what are you thinking? Seven? I'm gonna go seven. I'm definitely gonna go seven. All right. Glad you're here, pal. Thanks for joining us. Again, you only had a minute. So let's get this next prompt up and then we'll hear what Jamie was gonna do. Okay. Sexting. No thank you. <laughs> Coward. Saccharin. <laughs> no, thank you. That's no saccharin either. Lush. No, thank you. Animatronic. Too long. Billowy. Too esoteric. Armchair. Yeah, armchair. Five minutes on armchair, gang. You can do this. Uh, we've been going for forty-five minutes now, so we'll probably this will. I, I think Jamie, this will be our second to last round or so. We'll look at the clock when this one is done. Okay. And uh, guys, this has been a great, uh, great addition. Uh, everybody out there, I hope you're enjoying it. Uh, if you are, go ahead and subscribe. Watch our show, Grievance Gulch. Jamie did an amazing job of uh, voicing the character in that. 
Um, I think we all did. I just, I, it was just such a fun project to work on. I really hope you guys will go and look it up on YouTube, watch all of the episodes. It was a fun, awesome project. And um, all the, you know, all the people we worked with were really, really great voice actors. So, you know, and then for half of us, that's not even our profession. So I was like really, really proud to work on it. And I think it turned out great. The art is really beautiful too. Yeah. You're a great asset. Which I knew that you oh. would be. You so my, you were going to tell want... us the joke that you wrote for the, the yes. prompt. Yes, okay. So, yeah, so here's my joke. Um, I am a total gold digger. Um, he does not get a date with me unless he can guarantee extra fries. I love it. Uh, yeah, <laughs> again, I think that's, uh, yeah, I liked it. It's and again, it's a stand-up. It's a personality joke. I get it. Like I said, it's not. It it's still it needs shaping, but it's a good baseline, I think. No, I like it because I like that uh, giving people the impression that you're going to go, you know, not blue but blueish, and then it turns into something completely else. But it's still not like, yeah, it's a good joke. That'll be a ten pointer for me. It's a joke I can perform in front of my mother. Who does not like the fact that I make jokes. <laughs> uh, so, just under three minutes to go, gang. Uh, and we've lost the... I keep having to refresh the deal so it'll show people's names. It's pretty annoying. Maybe try to figure out a way to, to sort that out. So, about two and a half minutes to go. We're halfway through with uh, armchair. Uh... Oh, the door to my office just opened of its own accord. I think I'm being haunted. <laughs> if you hear oh, my so family good. go by, that's why, because the door's open. I thought we'd get a personal appearance from the mem today. She, I built, uh, my wife is downstairs. I built some uh, bookcases in the house, uh -oh. and uh, they just got finished, and she is downstairs loading the bookcases with board games and puzzles and books and all that stuff. Cool. So she's having the time of her life right now. Very happy. <laughs> uh, just under two minutes to go on armchair. Jamie, are you still working with, um, are you doing stuff with Onward? What's going on with them? So Onward, they are having, I have not been able to participate. Um, just I've been exceedingly busy and there's some other things going on. Um, they are having um shows and things so they're having shows and things and performances but they are not doing a weekly show right now but they are teaching classes they are scheduling events um but it's it's one of those things where you have to check the calendar you have to see you have to check the calendar what's of the events to see what's going on when because it's nothing that you could just guarantee you guarantee that it's going to be a weekly show um but they've had a ton of really fun events um art type things where they have comedy and art, comedy and beer. They've had a bunch of rap battles, which everybody loves. So they're, yeah. you know, they're, they're chugging along, but I think it's just a matter of, you know, finding places to perform. And then also it's winter time. Everybody's been out of town. So I would think to look to, as the spring gets ramping up, I know they're going to start doing more event events, but I know they've been teaching classes through the, through the season. Yeah. Uh, 30 seconds to go, those of you who are writing jokes. I just posted a link to onwardtheater.org in the chat. Those are our friends who have got a uh, an improv uh, comedy of all kinds theater going here in Atlanta. They're good people. They're very funny. Uh, I you If you are in Atlanta, you got to go see uh, anything that they're doing. They're very funny. They are. So 10 seconds now. I'm seeing those jokes come flying in. That's good. Um Again, I don't know why the Discord thing won't show people's names. That's annoying. Two, one, and that is the time limit. So let's turn that off. I need to get some music going for next time, Jamie. All right. Let's look at these jokes. Coy managed to get his wife in, even though uh, not his wife, but his joke in, even though he's uh, uh, he's at, he's inside his work now, presumably doing work, whatever that is. Okay. <laughs> armchair here we go Remington right. was the first to get his joke in he says I do my best work in an armchair 
I do mediocre work on an ottoman, and I do no work at work. Uh, solid joke. What do you think, Jamie? I like it. I actually, I, I was, I was, I had to, I had to go over it one more time, but the second time I'm just like, all right, this, this actually appeals. I like it. I'm gonna give that one a solid six. Six. Maybe six. Yeah. Love it. Maybe six. A solid six. Okay. Let's see. What's next? A.A. Ron. He says, I hate armchair quarterbacks. The Detroit Lions need a better coach. <laughs> uh, I'm not sure that I get it. I mean, I get it. Detroit Lions. I'm not sure about those pieces. A.A. Ron. I love you. My brother in comedy. Uh, Jamie, what do you think? Where are we points wise? Points wise, I'm going to say I'm going to go four or five, just because you're going to leave you're going to leave out people who are. How do I put this? I get where you're going with it, um, but. I think that's one of those, it's a joke that you tell in Detroit and people like, like you said, it's an applause joke. Yeah. I think you tell that, I think you tell that joke in Detroit or wherever, actually you could probably tell this joke in like any NFL city that has a team that is notorious for like muffing it <laughs> and you're going to get like a roar. You mean like Atlanta? Oh, don't break my heart. <laughs> I'm just, hey, all I'm saying is, all I'm saying is I'm just saying. Uh, but, you know, even as we're sitting here, we're saying uh, this one in particular isn't that great. Um, he's done well. I mean, he's currently at the top of the leaderboard as of this. It's, just, like I said, it's, a, it's a joke. It's the kind of joke that gets you in with the crowd. But like you said, it's an applause joke. It's not necessarily a funny. It's not a ha ha. It's like a woohoo. We're on your side. So it, it works as part of a routine. But it is not, it's not a crack up right by itself, if that makes sense. It does. We are on his side, though, because he's our friend. Yes. So let's move yes. on. Craig says, for good health, move your body for 30 minutes a day. Unless, like me, your body is shaped like an armchair. <laughs> it's pretty good. It's very cute. Pretty good. Uh, you know what I think would have... I think if you added a if you if you mentioned the word armchair in an innocuous way in the setup and then and then the punchline was a callback to that, I think that would have turbocharged that joke. But already, as written, good joke. You got to laugh out of Jamie Curley, and she's no slouch. Oh, don't tell them that. I am such an easy laugh. <laughs> That's terrible. Uh, what do you think, uh, points wise? Points wise, I would go. I go like six or seven. Well, let's go seven then. Okay. Yeah. There it is. Okay. We'll go on to Sauce. Sauce, new to us, new to the game, killing it. He says, "The next president of the U.S. is solving the world's problems and yelling at the Chicago Bears' poor defense in the comfort of his favorite favorite armchair." I uh, apologize for a bobble delivery sauce. That's my bad. And I think the joke here, I think this is another one of his uh, uh, sort of abstract, it's like a Rothko joke. It's very, uh... <laughs> so what he's, he's, he's it's... comparing people who armchair quarterback politics to literally armchair quarterback. Literally armchair uh, quarterback. Okay. Yeah. I think I, that's, it's, okay. I didn't, like I, said, I didn't catch me. Like it didn't catch the funny bone, but it's such a smart joke. It's like an NPR joke. That, <laughs> yeah. Like that's it's got my it's respect. It's got Ira Glass all over it. Yeah, it's got my respect. It's got it, this is a total NPR joke, and I I respect the hell out of those because it's just it's it's hard to be a smart comedian in Look, America. In America. Hey, you don't, don't have to tell me. <laughs> it's hard to be a smart comedian in America. I don't know about the rest of the world. But I know it's hard to be a smart comedian in America, so I'm 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 gonna respect it. I'm gonna put like an eight on that one. Wow. All right. Yeah.
perhaps someone who is a host of a local Atlanta NPR affiliate arts program would have enjoyed <laughs> that joke. Do you think so, Jamie? God bless Lois. <laughs> My wife gets so mad at me when I do that impression. <laughs> that is a uh, beloved uh, local Atlanta uh, radio personality, Lois Reitzes, who was kind who, enough to interview way, us. Interviewed Jim for the play that he wrote several years ago, and we performed. So, And I, because I'm no dummy, uh, I brought Jamie along so that Lois could speak to Jamie and think that sort of by the transitive property, think that I was intelligent. <laughs> okay. Basement Tribune says, armchairs are the most arrogant piece of furniture. I love this setup. Armchairs, I'm, I haven't read a word of the rest of the joke. I love this setup. Arrogant piece of furniture. Armchairs are the most arrogant piece of furniture. It's hard to be condescending sitting on a lazy boy. <laughs> I like I'm, it. <laughs> I'm not as in love with the punch as I was with the setup because I thought that it was literally going to be about uh, anthropomorphized uh, furniture, but it does have that ring of truth and uh, sort of past familial trauma <laughs> that <laughs> that I look for. Uh, what do you think points-wise, Jamie? I'm going to give it an eight because I, like it. I just, like I said, that... I, that is a, to me that is a solid joke. What you because also the truth it's the truth, the pic the mental picture, and just like you said the the sharp beginning. I'm I'm gonna give that an eight. I liked it. All right, and with that eight by one point, Basement Tribune is at the top of the leaderboard. We got a really tight tight game going here. So we'll go on to Koi and uh, shout out to Koi for continuing to play even though he's. He's at his, at his work, whatever that is. He says, My wife says I'm an armchair psychiatrist, but I think it's pretty obvious our armchair has narcissistic personality disorder. <laughs> uh, I think with some better pauses than I gave it, that would that would be a much better joke. I think, I think it was a little bit held back by my delivery. Um, even, in the, even in the delivery, I still think that was solid. That... That is a very good in. Yeah, I, I don't. You were going a completely different. I was, I was fully expecting it to be a wife joke. So thank you for that. Yeah, yeah, I think so. What do you think for? Uh, where are you points wise? Um, points wise, I'm gonna give that one a nine. I am. Nine, love it. So that will put Koi in the lead at thirty five. And on we go to Admiral. He's had some great jokes tonight. Here is what he says. Uh, I've been spending too much time on my ass, so I bought an incliner. <laughs> That's a... I don't know why I'm laughing. It's so dumb. <laughs> What's an it's, a, it's the opposite of a recliner. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> It's like it's completely a word wordplay joke, and I play. I despise him play. with every fiber of my being for making me read it. But I also laughed, so I can't really talk shit. Exactly, you you laughed. It counts. Yeah. All right. What do you think? What are we doing for points? Um, I'm gonna give it like five or six because I just I don't know. I laughed. I gotta give it. You laughed. Okay. I'm going to let you have that one cuz like I had I don't even know what an incliner. I had to I stumbled on the word I didn't know, so that kind of took me out of joke mode. So I'm going to let you're you're the decider for that one. Uh I'm going to give it a 7. Okay. Because because mostly because I laughed. It Okay. Yeah. Respect. I don't respect yeah. it. Respect for sure. So, on to Pastor Fussycat. I'm not an armchair psychologist, but I did. <laughs> I'm sorry. I started laughing in the middle of it. What happened? Uh, this is a 10 for me. <laughs> well, can you finish the joke so I can hear it too? Yeah, I just got to laugh it out. Give me a sec. Okay. 
Uh, all right. <laughs> it's so dumb, but it's so short. It's 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 like uh, like you were saying. It's like a haiku. I'm not an armchair psychologist, but I did fuck a love seat. <laughs> I mean, that's a, that's terrible. It's a straight ten. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> Um, oh, you're wicked. <laughs> I don't know what to say. I, I'm I'm ashamed in a way for for laughing at it, but but I'm not gonna be too ashamed because I got a laugh out of it. So and that's what we're here for. It was. It was. What are you gonna do? Sometimes they sometimes these jokes, Jamie. You know as well as anyone. Sometimes they just they they come out of nowhere. They, they, catch, they catch you catch looking. You at the right. Yeah, they catch yeah. you at the right spirit, and it's just you're gone. So yeah, that was. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, and it looking. was punchy. It was punchy. I think punchy jokes do tend to catch you off guard more. Uh, the chatter now making fun of Koi and telling him that he's uh, lost points. Oh. Uh, that would be nice. He, he didn't, though. He's in the lead. Okay, so, uh, Jamie, you got time to do one more round? Uh, Yes. Okay, we've been going for an hour now. I don't want you... Jamie's got tomatoes, bacon, so uh, we got to make sure oh, those get... Shit. She does. Hang on. <laughs> Go ahead and start without me. I'll be right back. Okay. All right. So here comes your final prompt. Blush. Five minutes on blush. Uh, Jamie was just saying as the stream was started that she might have to jump up at some point because she's got tomatoes baking in the oven, and uh, then she forgot about them, and I did not. So final prompt, five minutes. Guys, thank you so much for hanging out with us. Uh, this has been a lot of fun. Uh, I hope you dig it. I hope you I hope you had fun. Um, we'll do it again. Uh, I, I, I had fun. I need to work on my scoreboard. I wrote this scoreboard software, and it's a little bit annoying. As you've seen, like I have to do addition every time, and that's that's always a chancy prospect. But uh, I would say it's, it's more or less anybody's game here. Uh, you know, the top five are within 10 points, so uh, uh, a 10 could certainly take it. And uh, we'll have a special role. I will put a, uh, I will give the winner a special role in the Discord. Um, if you'd like to join our Discord, you can. <laughs> but uh, I think most of you are already in it, so. Thank you so much to Dan Simard, uh, who is our patron Really appreciate his support. He's also a great joke writer uh, on his own. Uh, not only does he support us on Patreon, he's a great joke writer, and he's uh, he's he writes his jokes in English and in French as well. But he's not he's not a native English speaker, so it's doubly hard for him. But great joke writer, uh, great writer all around. Appreciate his support very much. And you, you listener slash viewer, could be getting shouted out right now if only you joined our Patreon. ScenesHop.us, you can find all that information. And I think there might even be a link to the Discord there. So if you're watching this later and you want to join the Discord, get in on this madness. That's where to do it. Okay, okay so three okay. minutes to okay. go. And Jamie's back. Yes. yes, friends, I am so desperate for a date. I have resorted to setting my kitchen on fire to bring me firemen. <laughs> I mean, you know they're in shape, right? So it seems reasonable. Yeah, but they're all so young. It's like raising puppies. <laughs> uh, yeah. So where did you guys, uh, where'd you go to an open mic night, if you don't mind me asking? God, it was at um, the, uh, it's over on, uh, it's in an area of Atlanta called Edgewood, and it's a um, brew, a, not, yeah, brewery? Beer Garden, Georgia Beer Garden, that's what it was called. Gotcha. Um, it was before the holiday, Georgia Beer Garden, and apparently they have an open mic night. And it was so funny because um, I was with the people in my improv group. Um, I belong to an improv group called um, Crazy Sexy Cool. Um, we've been on hiatus for a while because half of our members are actually working actors and actresses, and they've all scattered to the winds having gotten jobs writing in Hollywood. There's a lot of filming going on here in Atlanta, so they've all gotten jobs. So we haven't been able to rehearse in like ages, but we decided to just all get together and just hang out for an evening. Um, and yeah, so it was an open mic night. Um, 
a wide range and assortment of characters honestly a melange I would have taken, yeah it was it was and like i said that it was a range of talent um there were a lot of um fairly veteran atlanta comedians trying stuff out there was some newbies there was a couple people that just jumped up because they thought they were funny um one or two of them actually were wow um honestly if i had had my notebook i might have given it a shot because it was very a very low stakes not intimidating at all environment so yeah i can't say i mean if you stumble upon an open mic and you want to test stuff out i said just go for it because yeah <laughs> a lot of times you'll get encouraged by like i said again it's a range of talent can't predict who you're going to yeah. go up against but you know sometimes you'll see one or two guys in a row they're like yeah you know what <laughs> the five jokes i posted earlier today <laughs> on scene <Yeah>. shop <laughs> Yeah, well, get me I, in here. <laughs> that they play. Let me get in here. So uh, twenty or so seconds to go on blush. I I think all the time about the time that I was just completely bombing uh, at an open mic, and uh, I got off stage, and a friend of mine who was there, a fellow comic, was like, uh, "You know, man, this crowd, this crowd sucks. This it's it's this crowd is just they're awful. They're not paying attention. They suck." And uh. Eric Andre went up after me and just destroyed. Ooh. All right, there is the timer. Get those jokes in. This is going to be your final joke of the night. This is going to decide. It's going to be the decider. Jamie, I know you're on the edge of your seat. That's just how you sit. It's neck and neck. It's very yeah. close. It is, it is beard and beard. <laughs> All right, here we go. A.A. Ron has got the first joke of the last group. He says, at first blush, I thought the new model looked great. Then she took off her clothes. Hmm. Mm. Jamie, your thoughts? <laughs> um, I, feels a little punch downy to me. Uh, feels yeah, a little feels like, a little uh, I'm just like, I just, I don't know. I just, Oh. It just it doesn't feel like a joke. It feels like like yeah, like you said, it doesn't feel like a joke. It just feels like a I'm gonna give it five because it's joke shaped. I'll what go with think? that. All right. Yes, I'll I will I'll go with five. Onward to Basement Tribune. Who says I have really red cheeks, so lots of people ask if I wear a blush. I don't. I'm just really drunk. <laughs> sure yeah that works it plays what do you think where I, are we i'd figure that for about a seven uh let me talk you into an eight you know what you're i will go eight all right boom based, based on based on the levels we're setting i'll go eight <laughs> <laughs> that sounds uh I don't know. Well I'll I'll let it slide, but that sounded like a note. I'll take your note. <laughs> uh I by the way, I just I remember a um I remember an improviser whom we both know and whom we've both uh performed with who uh went on to uh star in some not star but but get parts in some big shows and he started his own sort of group uh here in Atlanta, but I remember him, <laughs> I remember somebody giving him a note and he was so pissed about the note. I remember him standing backstage with his arms crossed like this and he goes, I'll take your note. <laughs> <laughs> so every time I always think of that, I'll take your note. I'll take your note. <laughs> I'll remind you of who that was after the show. Okay. Uh, so here we go. Uh, really drunk was Basement Tribune, so we'll go on to Admiral. He says, I never get nervous. Every time I go on stage, I tell the butterflies in my stomach to picture the audience without clothes. <laughs> yeah. That's cute. Yeah, that's cute. All right, how, how, uh, put a monetary, or put a number value on cute. I'll give it an eight. Eight? Okay. I will, because it's adorable. 
All right. Honey and adorbs. So that puts Admiral at 40. Uh, that is his point total for the entire, for the game. Let's see if anybody can top him and steal that first place position. We go on to Craig. Craig says, I blush when people pay me a compliment, but it's okay. It never happens. <laughs> I mean, Aww. I can identify, buddy. I'm with you. That's a great, uh, uh, that's a solid self-deprecating joke. Say that is a solid joke. I'm going to go with nine for that one. Nine. Love it. Short, punchy, self-deprecating, turned on itself. I, that is, that, yeah. That'll play. Um, I'm from Alabama, and where I come from, we would say, that dog will hunt. That dog will hunt. That dog will hunt. All right. So, Remington says, I blush every time I fall out of a window, and I live in Russia. <laughs> uh, I'm not sure that the pieces go together, but I do. I do like it. I mean, we all know about uh, Putin's, you know, staff members, uh, yeah. peculiarly being defenestrated. So, uh, what do you think, number wise? I'm gonna give it an eight. All right, I like it. I am. Also, how does that guy get people to work for him? Yeah. Like, it's just, is it like, okay, you know, I'll, t I'll take it. And it's like, you know, I want, you know, a 10% bonus health insurance and a basement office. I I think it's kind of like, I think it's like, uh, you know, don't you know that the game is rigged? Well, yeah, but it's the only game in town. I mean, <laughs> it's like, yeah, I know it's rigged, but if I don't play here, I'm not playing. So. Plus I mean, those giant, you know, stuffed bunnies are so much fun. So. It's like you're, you're, there's there's there are not two different kinds of oligarchs in Russia. There's Putin's oligarchs and there's dead people. So you don't really have a choice. All right, Koi. Did I give him his points? Yes. Yeah. I had to quickly remember what eight plus three eight, is. Yeah. I apologize. Eight for Remington. And now you said Koi has a joke. Yep. On to Koi, okay. who is the a hero for uh, submitting his jokes while at work. He says. I never understood the phrase blushing bride until my own wedding. She's mm -hmm. blushing because she's embarrassed of the loser standing next to her. <laughs> uh, I don't think it's, it, it's not my favorite joke of his I've ever heard, but I think that's a sort of a fraught thing to say because he's got a lot of jokes that I really like a lot. Um, it's I so like I said the the core of that joke is funny. Yes. I think if the old I said again it's one of those things I think it just needs shaping. I think like the the first part it needs it just needs to be snappier, but the core of the joke is solid. Yeah. All right. So monetarily, what do you think? If you hear a noise that sounds like a cat, it's because there's a cat in here. Oh, I love the cat. Okay. Um. I'm gonna go. I don't know, seven or eight. I'm gonna. Well, let's 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 do seven. Seven. Let's do seven. Forty-two. That gives Koi forty-two. Now two points ahead of Admiral. Can Pastor Fussy Cat take that away? Here we go. He says, "I'm embarrassed to admit it, but this is the first time I've chatted online with anyone over 11. You know, I'm not a religious person, but y'all need to go to church. <laughs> y'all need J. Y'all need Jesus. <laughs> um, I mean, it made Jamie laugh. It's terrible. I know. I'm going to hell for laughing. Heck, I'll be driving the bus. <laughs> but, uh, it is, but it is funny, and yes, and again, this is one of those where it's a delivery thing too. It's the, the the little tag on the end is what really sells it. I I'm a fan. All right. Like I, said, I, know I should be ashamed of myself, but I'm a fan. How much of a fan? I'm gonna go nine. Nine. Yep. Yeah, I'm gonna go nine. Okay. I will defer to you. Thirty nine. Final score for Pastor Fussy Cat. Okay, uh, Sauce says, 
always nervous around the camp counselor. They always mentioned how they liked my rosy cheeks. He wasn't talking about my face. <laughs> it's yeah. cute. It's cute. And it's, like I said, play on cheeks. I think it suffers a little bit from the fact that we've had a couple of other similar jokes. I think had we not had those before, this one would have been able to shine a little bit more. Yeah. Um, what do you think monetarily? It's just, okay. <clears throat> You're right. It's place in the rotation detracted from it, but as it, looking at it just by itself, it's a decent joke. It's like I said, it's a good joke. It's got a good shape. It, you know, play on cheeks. Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna, give it, I'm gonna give it a seven. Actually, I'm gonna give it an eight. I'm gonna go eight. Your wish is my command. I'm going eight. All right, gang, I think that is our jokes. Now, one thing I like to do uh, at the end of this is uh, uh, post a poll, but I don't think it'll work because we're doing YouTube now, and I don't think YouTube can do polls. Um, but I used to always post a poll um, at the end of the stream, and, and I would allow the chat to sort of to say anybody that they thought that I was unfair to. And this is the idea here is that the chat gets its chance to kind of to come back at me a little bit. So uh, I'll just ask you guys who are in the chat if you uh, if you think that I judged anyone too harshly. Uh, obviously, Jamie is beyond reproach. But if you think <laughs> I judged anybody too harshly, uh, just let me know. Or if I made any other kind of mistake, uh, feel free to let me know. Um, but overall. I just want to say thank you guys so much for hanging out, and thank you especially to Jamie Curley for agreeing to be my co-host. Jamie, you're indispensable. You're wonderful. Um, Absolutely. Guys, this was so much fun. You guys have such good jokes. Like I said, this is, like I said, the, the, the wealth of talent is amazing. It's an embarrassment of riches around here. Yeah. You guys did a great job. Uh, well, I think that's going to wrap us up, guys. Um Go on the website. Uh, you can find us in, on the Reddit, uh, subreddit, our comedy writing. Uh, you can post jokes with us. We'll try to help keep you motivated. We'll try to help keep your uh, jokes always improving. Um, I'm impressed, guys. You guys did a really great job with these jokes tonight. Um, really appreciate it. And uh, I think that'll do us. And uh, just one final time, thank you so much, Jamie. Thank you.